Good evening. This is CTV News for Wednesday, September 7th. I'm Patricia Vallone. And I'm Denise Douglas. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Victims of the fire and explosion at a Silver Spring apartment complex are taking legal action. They, along with CASA, announced a lawsuit just steps away from where the tragedy happened. Spoke with them earlier. Here's what they have to say. Cecilia Escobar lives across from the buildings that caught fire and exploded at the Flower Branch complex. With tears in her eyes, she says, I still feel like it's the same night every time I think about it. And we know that hundreds of people continue to suffer debilitating psychological effects from this incident and do not feel safe in their home. She and others joined CASA today to announce they will be filing a lawsuit seeking an unspecified amount of monetary compensation as well as changes in laws and policies. We are reviewing what kind of policies are in place to protect the tenants right here in Silver Spring but also around the state of Maryland. There are families without homes, they've lost everything they have, people have lost loved ones, people have lost children, people are injured. Um, and in these cases, compensation is, is part of justice, and so that's what we're here to find. Nearly 100 people were displaced, over 30 treated at area hospitals, and seven died. Investigators concluded that a natural gas line caused the incident. Some residents put the blame squarely on K Management, the company that runs the complex, saying that the property managers often ignore their complaints and concerns, like prior reports that some people smelled gas before the tragedy. In this case, they've been asking for a meeting for weeks and haven't gotten a response. So they marched to the rental office with a petition in hand demanding a date. Erica Ramirez says, we want to know what's going on, where we stand for our children and families. But Ruth Jahalsko, a regional manager, simply tells the residents she'll get back to them. This is unacceptable. Not satisfied, residents put the pressure on. Still, Jahalsko offers few answers. And we'll hopefully, get that, yeah. by later this week or next but week, we could have something because it's very, very important. I understand. Oh, got pretty heated there for a second. I don't know if you heard, but uh, the property manager did say that we'll get back to you. And then she also said, we understand. Talk to them also about a date for the lawsuit. No date set at this point. And also in terms of who will be part of this suit, that's to be revealed. And uh, we asked for comment from Ruth Jahalsko, and she wouldn't offer any as well. Well, a bus driver who struck and killed a pedestrian in Upper Marlboro in 2014 goes on trial. Michelle Murray of Severn is charged with negligent manslaughter in what prosecutors say is a case of distracted driving. Michelle Metzger was in the courtroom as proceedings began and has the latest from the Prince George's Circuit Court. During opening statements, prosecutors say Prince George's County bus driver Michelle Murray failed in her duty as a professional driver by not fully paying attention to the road. When she struck a pedestrian in a crosswalk in downtown Upper Marlboro in 2014 and dragged her 40 feet to her death. Now, Michelle Murray is charged with negligent manslaughter, but her attorneys say that this was not a crime, but a tragic accident. 30-year-old Michelle Murray was behind the wheel of a county transit bus the morning of July 31st, 2014, attempting a legal left turn onto Main Street from Water Street when she hit 69-year-old Patsy Burton, who was in a crosswalk. The La Plata woman who worked in downtown Upper Marlboro died of her injuries. According to the defense, Murray never saw the pedestrian and didn't know she'd hit anyone. Her attorneys say a pole on the bus created a blind spot and a utility pole on the sidewalk blocked her view of Burton. Today, a witness testified that he saw Burton look both ways before crossing the street. He testified that she was about a third of the way across when the bus came up and she disappeared underneath. Another witness, a passenger on the bus, says Murray was talking to a passenger as she was making that left turn. He said she kept driving until people started screaming at her to stop. Patsy Burton was a mother of four, married 51 years to her husband, Mac, who took the stand briefly today and then sat in the courtroom tearfully listening to witnesses as they recalled seeing his wife disappear underneath the bus. And one testified that he was unable to render her aid as she lay stuck underneath its tire. 
Now, Murray also faces charges of reckless and negligent driving and failing to avoid a pedestrian collision. Reporting in Upper Marlboro, I'm Rochelle Metzger, CTV News. Pepco customers will get a chance to sound off at a public hearing later this week. At issue is the power company's request to increase rates by $104 million. The rate hike would cost residential customers about $13 more a month. The move comes months after the Pepco Exelon merger, which had the support of the Prince George's County officials. In, uh, in, in their Pepco bill. Neither do I. But what we want is to make sure there's reliable service. Uh, I worry most, and I said this, and this is why we support the merger. I worry when we have snowstorms, um, when we have uh, thunderstorms, mm -hmm. and not having the ability to keep people's lights on. Um, I've gone through that as county executive here, and I don't want to see that happen again. So this merger will allow us to uh, be able to, to tap into resources that will keep the power on, help us fix it faster. The public hearing is set for tomorrow night at 630 at Prince George's Community College, Largo Student Center, room 277. Riders on the blue and silver lines encountered delays this morning. A downed cable at the Morgan Boulevard station resulted in single tracking between Morgan and the Addison Road stops. Now, meantime, WMATA proposes three plans to shut down train service early. Two scenarios have the rail system closing at 1130 p.m. from Monday to Thursday while another scenario has Metro opening at 7 in the morning and shutting down at 10 p.m. on Sunday. CTV spoke with some commuters who aren't happy about the proposed changes. Earlier, it's kind of inconvenient to people who work late. If it shuts down at 1130, that stops a lot of people from getting where they have to go, especially with them safe tracking nowadays. Now, Metro says these plans would give additional hours to crews working on the Safe Track Maintenance Program. A hearing on the matter is scheduled for tomorrow morning at 9. And you are watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. And I'm Denise Douglas. 